Um, I see we have some Emilio Pagan questions. Um, you know, I'm going to have to take another sip of my drink before we address that. You know, PTSD, Pagan. That's, that's what the P in, in PTSD stands for, Pagan. Um, you know, I, I would have cut bait on Pagan long ago. You know, they really changed their usage of him later in the year. I don't think it really hurt um, after they'd figured out the bullpen and they pushed him to um, uh, low leverage. You know, he didn't really, it didn't really matter much, but he didn't hurt the team at that point. Um, they clearly believe in his stuff, and I get that. Um, I do because he has good stuff. His pitches look nice. Um, I don't, uh, but when you can't command in the zone, um, I, don't, I just don't know how that's going to translate into anything. You know, I, I think the upside is like he's, you know, solid, you know, it's not like the Pagan upside is like he's freaking a uh, closer. You know, he's, he's Duran. You know, that's not, that's just not going to happen. Um, that's just not going to happen. So I think for as much of a headache as he's been, and, you know, he has a salary, uh, he's a guy you can't option around. Um, I would have cut him a long time ago. But, you know, there's always like a reliever where no ma- you watched, you kind of went through, the hard times with, and you watched them struggle and give up like a million home runs. And then even if they become really good, you just never, ever feel like you can trust them. You're just, you're like shell shocked. And I, that's me with Emilio Pagan. I think Emilio Pagan could throw like a hundred innings of a 1.5 ERA. And still like in that 101st inning, I would still just be like, oh man, I just don't feel good with this guy in the mound. I just don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know. I don't know if Pagan can even earn my trust to the level that I would want to be seeing him in, you know, eighth or ninth inning uh, of tight games um, at this point. That's me personally, but I think everybody has that guy though, you know, um, going back and one of the guys who did bridge that gap into being, tr- being trusted uh, was Eddie Guardado. If you, if you watched an early career, Eddie Guardado out of the bullpen, Oh my goodness, it was a mess. He oh, he got crushed. And then that took me so long to sort of put get past that after he became a closer um, and was really good. So it took a very, very long time. Again, this is more of a discussion on how a bullpen evolves, how the Twins bullpen was used last year. So we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about uh, leverage index a bunch here. And a stat that's... Uh, shortened down to GMLI is the leverage index when a pitcher enters the game. Uh, And this is something you can get broken down, you know, on appearance on month on year. Um, And basically I like to look at this because it sort of distills it down to how the manager was managing the bullpen. Now, when a guy pitches himself into higher leverage situations, if you just want to look at the leverage index, that's what you're going to see. Um, this is every Twins pitcher that threw more than 20 innings um, out of the bullpen last year. I want to talk about these kind of in chunks. We can look at them a little bit easier. Uh, so this first set of four are the four relievers that were from pole to pole. They were in the bullpen the entire season. Uh, and this is their GMLI, their leverage index when they entered a game by month. And again, we, we kind of reference this with Pagan. You can see in the blue here, and uh, if you look at his leverage index, it's much higher because he pitched himself into higher leverage quite a few times. Uh, but you can see he was going into super high leverage uh, situations in April, even into June. Uh, but then after that, they really worked him to the bottom of the bullpen. He was pitching in super low leverage in August and September. So we'll see again, you know, I wouldn't have kept him around. I wouldn't be paying him uh, whatever arbitration salary he's getting. Uh, But, you know, we'll see. Maybe the Twins, with a full offseason with him, he was acquired like the day before opening day. So the Twins didn't really have a ton of time to try to work on adjustments or anything. We'll see. 